you're watching HCTV 22 City News. Your source for news and information on issues, people, arts and entertainment, and sports in the city of Hawthorne. In this edition of City News, see what the Hawthorne Police Department is doing to make our city a safer place. Also, we tell you where in Hawthorne you can drive a little faster. And a new president and CEO with big visions, we introduce you to the new person in charge at Behavioral Health Services. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Hello and welcome to City News. I'm Michelle Mizell Archer. Reports show that unlicensed drivers are responsible for a high percentage of hit-and-run accidents. The Hawthorne Police aim to curb this problem with monthly checkpoints. HCTV's Christina Pascucci has more. The Hawthorne Police Department's Traffic Bureau recently set up a checkpoint on Hawthorne and El Segundo Boulevards. Their objective was clear. The main goal is to reduce traffic accidents. Based on our statistics or reports, many of our traffic accidents are, occur with uh, people with no driver's licenses or they have suspended driver's license. Police officers asked to see driver's licenses. Those without licenses were instructed to pull into the adjacent parking lot, where they were then ticketed and towed. This efficient setup allowed motorists to flow through quickly with minimal interruption of their day. It depends all on how, you know, how fast you're looking to get somewhere, but it doesn't seem to take that long. Police say checkpoints like this have a direct correlation to the amount of car accidents in Hawthorne. I know it does have an effect on the amount of hit and run accidents we have because it, ha it does deter people from doing it. This payoff is invaluable. Motorists seem to agree. This is a good idea and they should have it do it more, more often. That way we can really get people off the street who shouldn't be driving, you know, and maybe everybody's insurance might go down. <laughs> Checkpoints also make the city safer in other ways. We will find people with criminal records. We will find uh, uh, people with outstanding felony warrants, uh, people with guns, knives, uh, whatever it may be, contraband, narcotics. Overall, a short delay proves worthwhile to protect the residents of Hawthorne. For HCTV, I'm Christina Pascucci. The checkpoint was one of two Hawthorne police recently held. A total 178 vehicles belonging to drivers without licenses or with suspended licenses were towed. Well, state law requires cities where police will use laser or radar guns for speed enforcement to conduct a traffic survey every five years. A recent survey in Hawthorne resulted in a five-mile speed increase on six streets. But beware, the slight bump in speed doesn't necessarily mean you can drive faster. I would like to uh, just remind people that slow down. Speed is, uh, like I said, plays a part in most of uh, collisions, especially those with injuries. And so we will be enforcing speed limit throughout the city like we always do. And uh, please slow down. El Segundo Boulevard from Inglewood Avenue to Yukon Avenue will now have a speed limit of 40 miles per hour. 135th Street from Aviation Boulevard to Glasgow Place is now 30 miles per hour unless children are present. 147th Street from Ocean Gate Avenue to Inglewood Avenue is now 30 miles per hour. Jack Northrop Avenue from Prairie Avenue to Crenshaw Boulevard is now 40 miles per hour. Prairie Avenue from Imperial Highway to Rosecrans Avenue is now 40 miles per hour. And Crenshaw Boulevard from 120th to 132nd streets is now 40 miles per hour. The traffic survey is based on accident rates and how fast vehicles travel on streets. The newly hired president and CEO of Behavioral Health Services is already making positive changes. Alex Batres has more. Having worked as executive director for Behavioral Health Services Pacific Clinics 10 years ago, new president Henry Van Outhusen is returning to familiar ground and making positive changes. What I did at my job at Pacific Clinics was to integrate drug and alcohol outpatient treatment into a mental health setting. Van Outhusen stood out from among other applicants because of his extensive background in the field and attention to individual care. You can read a book and you can teach the book, but unless you have hands-on doing it, it's not the same. After witnessing many individuals suffer from co-occurring disorders during his years in school, Van Outhusen was determined to help. When I did my internship, I ran across a lot of individuals who had both. 
uh, mental health and drug and alcohol disorders. And sort of that became my passion. Van Out Houston believes in building programs around individual strengths and unique traits in order to make them successful. I really believe that when you can address the specific issues of specific groups using specific treatment modalities and culturally competent staff, what best practice research says is the outcomes are better. Van Out Houston also says he plans to further expand on Behavioral Health Services' vision of offering comprehensive human services. For HCTV, I'm Alex Patres. <laughs> Henry Van Outhausen also hopes to set up a 10-bed transitional facility for lesbian, gay, transsexual, and bisexual youth. Congresswoman Maxine Waters announced a $390,000 grant to the South Bay Workforce Investment Board's Bridge to Work program. Bridge to Work takes at-risk young adults in South L.A. County off the streets and prepares them with basic skills for school and the workplace. This program will help young people who have lost their way. Some of them have been in gangs. And We're going to get lots of people jobs and we're going to get the people who need a second chance. The Bridge to Work program is responsible for an 80 percent employment rate. Well, it won't be long before the Hawthorne Municipal Airport will have uninterrupted service a more than $6 million project to renovate runways and taxiways at the airport is nearly complete. The airport recently closed for about a week so construction crews could smooth out surface imperfections. Runways and taxiways will momentarily shut down once again later this month for sealing and restriping. Workers plan to finish the last phase of renovations at the airport by April. Coming up next on City News, stacks of pancakes and sticky syrup are on the menu for one recent fundraiser. Also, can you spell the word discreet? We show you who can. Stay tuned. I am more than this. Seems okay to me, kid. Maybe you should check your math. Huh? <laughs> hey there. Hey, boss. Let's see what you got. Maybe you should check yours. Today. You did? She like a lot at my school. She has pretty hair and I like her long hair. Mm -hmm. We play together, we talk together, and we were eating outside and um, bugs got on it. Ooh. Nah. Ooh. They're just fly around and get on people's food. Then we killed all the bugs and then it was gone before we knowed it. Anyone else? My name is David, and in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. I do. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking Who's next? before they start drinking. Welcome back. Well, it was a hearty breakfast in more ways than one. Reporter Alex Batres tells us how a morning meal helped fund a few local programs. Pancakes bubbled up to a warm buttermilk taste. But these mouth-watering pancakes weren't being cooked at a restaurant. Students from Hawthorne Leo's Club helped to serve breakfast to benefit local programs that are making big changes in the community. It was kind of the seed money to help them you know, sustained through the year. We need to uh, donate money to uh, um, the foundation, and this is an easy way to do that. The fundraiser was held at the Behavioral Health Services Center. 
proceeds will benefit the Hawthorne Lions Vision Program, which enables children to receive free vision care services. We also have a, a mobile, mobile screen uh, unit that goes to schools or goes to um, churches, as long as there's a gathering or picnics, you know, at the park or whatever, uh, to uh, uh, give free uh, eye tests. Some of the proceeds will also help fund the South Bay Outpatient Family Center. What this does is allow us to provide services, um, additional activities for our clients here. The Behavioral Health Services offers drug and alcohol treatment programs and also offers mental health services. Many who have attended these programs have made positive changes. Instead of me resorting to violence or anywhere like that, now I can step back and see what part I played in it. Others have found faith. Prior to coming to the program, I was a non-believer. By me going to the program, getting involved in my recovery, I could see life a lot clearer now. Steve Martinez has been in and out of prison for the past 30 years and now sees a brighter future for himself. That's my dream, you know, find the right woman, get married, and just, you know, live a normal life. Because I don't want to live in prison anymore. Now helping to cook breakfast to raise money in the community, Martinez is giving back to the program that has impacted his life. For HCTV, I am Alex Patres. About $1,000 was raised at the breakfast. Well, one local high school student is among a select few who have been awarded with a statewide scholarship. Hawthorne Math and Science Academy senior Rebecca Diaz is among 26 students in California who recently received a $1,000 scholarship from the Caldwell Flores Winters Foundation. The scholarship program helps students who have overcome challenges go to college. Rebecca says she would like to attend the University of Southern California or Berkeley. She has a 4.1 grade point average. I before E, except after C, no doubt students had this rule in mind when they recently competed in the Hawthorne School District's second annual spelling bee. Reporter Lindsay Case was at Hawthorne Middle School for the competition. The screen, D-I-S-C-R-E-T-E, -E. the screen? Correct. That was the winning word at this year's district spelling bee. Students represented nine different schools, and in the end, a sixth grader named Hans won with a very smart approach. Sometimes I write behind my, um, my uh, card. You see it all the time in the um, national spelling bees and stuff, so I thought it was a pretty good, um, like, you know, tactic. Hans is the reigning champion. She also won the district spelling bee last year, but she couldn't have done it without her mom. After school, my um, mom just usually uh, prints out um, these uh, words from the internet or something or wherever she gets them from, and um, she tells me to spell them. And if I get them wrong, she writes them down. And then those are the words we review. So I can like perfect um, whatever I spell. Many students request to hear the word in a sentence or may need the definition. Naveen, who was runner-up, believes studying is a must. After school, I read I read many books that I haven't read before, mm -hmm. and I go over my lists, my spelling lists, over and over again. Besides practice, it's also key to remain calm during the competition. I think of the audience as one of my classmates, and my teacher right there telling me to focus, and my parents and my sister looking at me telling me that I'll do a great job. Each student received a commemorative certificate and Hans was given a special plaque. Last year, she made it to the state competition in Sonoma. I want to go back to Sonoma this year and like try to take it all. She also had a special message for her dad who's fighting the war in Iraq. Dad, um, this is to make you proud and, um, this, and I hope I make you proud the same way you make me proud. Hans will compete at the Los Angeles County Spelling Bee at the end of the month. For HCTV, I'm Lindsay Case. We'll keep you up to date on Hans's progress. If all goes well, she will head to the state competition in Sonoma later this year. Well, some students will be rewarded for showing up at one local high school. Area service group representatives from Hawthorne and Lawndale recently presented administrators at Losinger High with a $2,500 check for the school's attendance incentive program. I just like to thank everyone who contributed to this very generous, generous donation that goes directly to kids 